Hey, how do you do guys? It's Brahim here and welcome back to yet another episode of the Everyman's Road to Glory. Now, as you can see us jumping into the episode, this is the squad I've built. It's gonna be a special one again. We built the best possible League 2 squad. Now, as we go through it straight away, the idea is of course, we have the silver objectives and the silver lounge and the silver beasts or whatever it's called to unlock the um, team of the week keen and a lot of packs as well. Um, and so we figured we built a silver squad. Uh, I had a look around what best possible squads we can build and um, the League 1 squad was one of uh, the League 2 squad was one of them. Uh, obviously nothing too special as you can see, non-rare silvers all around, very low rated, but um, it's still a set of silver players, uh, put some chemistry styles, styles on them, put them in information where it gets the highest average rating per position, per player. That's why Clark for example is only 65 rated though despite us having 66 rated players and even a couple of 70, 67 rated players sitting on the bench. We didn't uh, put him in because he's a high rated CDM uh, for that position, but he starts out as a center mid. I'm not going to into too, too deep, but uh, yeah, that's basically the squad. The exciting players are coming down the wings, sadly they're not going to have that much impact going forwards just because we need them to defend a bit because our, you know, when he has three at the back, I tried it before to just let them stay wide and let my CDM stay back doesn't quite work out. We have a striker in at that camp spot because he's very good rated for it. And we have the big man up front, the, uh, the best player of our <coughs> of the team, the star of the team of course, Jamie Matt, uh, an inform player from uh, Forest Green Rovers. Uh, 59 rated is space card and his inform got an insane stat uh, boost. Look at those physicals, 90 something strength. And yeah, I'm hoping for him to make the, the big difference for us. And also we've got Ewan Doyle. Ewan Doyle shouldn't even be in the squad because there actually is a bronze player who starts out as a central attacking midfielder, his name is Gareth Evans. And in terms of rating per position, so if you go for, if you would move him up to a striker, he would be a 67 point something rated striker. And you know it obviously isn't being 66 rated. Um, because he has got such high shooting stats. I had a look at the player in real life, he doesn't like, he has a good goal return for a cam. I didn't look at any highlights or anything, but um, not sure if he warrants those kind of stats. I'm not sure if they really thought about it, but he would be a way higher rated striker than he is at Cam, and I really would have loved to have him in because he's got that 81, 82 pace and um, 81 physical as well, so very nice stats. Um, would have linked up very nicely with Jamil Matt. Sadly, we have to go with Ewan Doyle, who doesn't have any really impressive stats. Fun fact about Ewan Doyle though, he was actually last season in League 2, not playing for Bolton back then, but it was Swinton I do believe, Swinton Town. He was on track to, to beat the record of uh, goals scored in League, League 2 ever, which was uh, 31, and he got 25 or 26 when the league was cancelled obviously due to, to the COVID-19 pandemic. As you can see, he's uh, finishing some objectives to start out today's episode. SP, uh, some SPCs. As per usual, we're going to start off with a little bit of a pack opening. We're going to do it post commentary because we don't have two exciting packs in it. Uh, but do stick around for, for the end of the episode as well, where we have the big packs, a uh, bit, bit of a pack opening at the end of the episode as well. And I do apologize, it's going to be a very long video yet, yet again because I just put in a huge chunk of gameplay because I uh, I unlocked uh, spoilers. Well, obviously, I'm going to finish it because you just need to get the time and play. Not about skill or anything. Uh, I unlocked that in for Moise Keen, as you can see, we're going for him right now. I did those Silver Beast object objectives. And then um, as that Silver Moise Keen, as you saw, was about to run out, uh, I got in on the game on the next day and also got the Silver Inform Noah Okafor, who's obviously from Salzburg, so my local club, as you can see, is selling a lot of things, uh, opened some bronze packs in between the episodes, trying to get in a bit more of, of bronze packs because, yeah, um, it's just nice to have the players for SPCs and to sell them as well. But jumping into our packs, let's see what they have in store for us. We have a mixed player pack in here. Oh, and I do have to mention the last episode, of episode 11, I, I don't think it worked out because I think something went wrong in my gameplay bit. And when I edited it, I uploaded it and it shows me that it doesn't show. So I'm afraid there's no way for me to fix it. I don't have the gameplay videos anymore. I deleted them already. So sadly, yeah, I'm gonna not be able to, to provide you that video. Nothing too exciting happened, we just unlocked the rule breakers, um, the rule breakers, what's he called, Akin Fenwa, um, bit, of, bit of a squad for, him, for that, and um, yeah, it wasn't too bad. <coughs> As you can see, striker, Brazilian, Manchester City, it's Gabriel Jesus again! We already got him untradeable, but luckily, luckily this pack is tradable, and he still goes for a massive 30,000 coins! We're getting so lucky with packs, that basically pays for Tremel Matt. 
Um, you know, exactly. I just wanted to mention that the the, the silver informs, all of them are going for, uh, are extinct. So it took me quite a while to get Shamil Matt in to the to the club. Uh, he did show up for thirty thousand coins. I'm going to keep him around because I do think silver informs are still extinct because I think there's only one hero card around right now in terms of silver informs. Um, and so I don't know, we're really being put on the market and you need them for objectives uh, a couple of times. You should just unlock the silver objectives, uh, the silver team of the big players you can get through the silver lounge, but not everybody has that time, so they try to go, go, with, uh, go and buy just some silver team of the week players. Um, so I'm gonna stick, uh, I'm gonna hang on to Jamie Matt because I'm not sure he might just drop down if next week you have two silver informs in packs, but there might also be a case of him just, um, if the price range is being up because like EA can't keep those silver informs extinct for, for, for the rest of time. So um, quite interesting to see what, what will happen there. As you can see, the rest of the packs didn't really yield us anything too impressive, but I mean, we got a 30,000 coin player from a pack where I really, really wasn't expecting it. But we do get balls here. It's gonna be Bosnian striker, Roma, and it's gonna be Eden Sheko. In fact, I think the third time this is this series now, and a load of other good players as well. So yeah, we're very happy with the kind of packs we had. And you know, I really quite like to like this rhythm we've got going, just starting out, finishing a couple of SPCs, jumping in with some, some packs. And as you can see, we jump into the gameplay, but I'm just gonna let this run in the background and um, just give you a bit of an overview about the history of the English Football League 2. Uh, just, you know, for something else, a bit of trivia, <coughs> uh, because like, it's not too interesting me commentating over the gameplay anyway. So uh, from what we know of the English Football League 2, it's to the best of my knowledge, I haven't checked this in its entirety. It's the lowest tier national sports league, so on, on a national level, uh, which is still a fully professional league. Like it's it's the old, it's the lowest one in the world, I do believe. Um, you know, like it's the fourth tier of English football, which is annoying because it's called League Two. There's also loads of second divisions throughout uh, smaller countries, which are called the first league or League One or whatever in Austria. You have that. It's just way confusing. I don't know why you do that. But anyways. Um, English Football League 2 is, to, to the best of my knowledge, the lowest tier professional um, sports league in the world. Uh, it was introduced in the 2004-05 season, uh, replacing different versions of before, and I don't think too much changed, not too sure about that. And uh, funnily enough, Ma Morecambe is the longest serving club within the league, uh, getting promoted from the National Conference back in 2007 and never getting promoted or relegated out of it, <coughs> which is quite a rare, long time, I do believe, 13 years for a club to be in this kind of walkthrough league where like there's loads of relegations and promotions going on with uh, four clubs getting promoted each year with uh, the fourth promotion spot being played out between the fourth and what's it going to be seventh place team uh, for the promotion playoff and there are also two teams relegated into the national league and uh, yeah um, as for clubs in the in the English foot in the football league two, there are currently three former Premier League clubs, um, which are quite interesting to, to talk about. It's Bradford City, Oldham Athletic, and unfortunate case of Bolton Wanderers just getting relegated following uh, them almost going, going extinct last year. But uh, they did stick around. They did sign a couple of good players, including our striker Ewan Doyle, and uh, they are looking to manifest themselves back in the English football leagues, uh, not dropping down to the national leagues. Haven't started too well this season. I think they're towards the bottom of the table, but with only two teams getting relegated, you'd find it's time to stay in there. They have, of course, 24 clubs in, in the in the uh, League Two, as in every English football league league, which is the Championship, League One, and League Two. Um, <coughs> and yeah, uh, some other interesting teams include, uh, like I mentioned, the Premier League boys. Um, but we also need to shout out some new clubs on the block. Which includes uh, Forest Green Rovers. Not both. Both of those clubs we're going to talk about. They're not really new in the sense of uh, being founded recently, but uh, recent success. Um, they're currently sitting in the promotion zone, um, and they are since 2015 the world's first vegan football club. And they also aim for climate neutrality with eco-friendly um, like areas <coughs> and facilities. Uh, the, the, the stadium, for, for instance, is al alongside uh, travels to away games and stuff. So it's a very cool project, uh, very interesting, and seemingly very successful. They only got promoted to the to the League Two, I think, in 2017 or it was 2018. I don't know. And they have been looking towards the top of the table ever since. Uh, and you saw, I think, we had one or two players, maybe even three players in our starting eleven from Forest Green, uh, including the star man Jamil Matt. 
<coughs> so shout out to them, incredible project. Uh, their, their hometown, their hometown for, from uh, Forest Green Rovers, Nailsworth, is uh, the smallest town ever to host its own football league club. And uh, the entire civil parish of Nailsworth is just about able to fill the 5,100 um, capacity stadium of, of Forest Green Rovers. So even if everybody came to their game, they'd, they'd only just about fill their stadium. I don't know how, how much they sell, sell it out by. Uh, but yeah, very cool project. And the second highly interesting team, probably even more talked about, is Salford City. Now this is a club, I think, on the outskirts of Manchester. Not sure about the exact location. And uh, it rose to prominence in 2014 because members of the Manchester United class of 92, uh, in Nicky Bird, Ryan Giggs, the Neville brothers, and Paul Scholes, bought shares of the club alongside a, a title and a businessman, or I don't know who exactly. Uh, that's not interesting to us. <laughs> and also David Beckham joined the project, uh, buying 10% as well in 2019. All of them own 10% each. Um, and the other 40 are then owned by the Chinese or Ty Taiwanese or whatever businessmen. Uh, yeah, but judging by those guys joining in, it seems like an inevitable rise up the, up the league is inbound. Uh, but the, when the club got promoted to League 2 just last year. And the first time, it's the first time ever hitting the heights of, of professional football for Salford City, despite existing for a long time already. Um, but you know, with that rise seeming inevitable, you just never know if it's really going to happen. Uh, they put it on aim in 2014 when they took over the club, talking about being in a championship in 15 years. And you know, I quite like that. It's fairly realistic, not too over the top, uh, not too unrealistic, and, uh, and a good aim to work towards. Now they still have about nine years left to that, um, two promotion left to get there. So I'm not sure if you're gonna get it, but uh, they seem to be spending money wisely and in, in good areas, and uh, probably are gonna are gonna get there, I would reckon. But you just never know what's gonna happen in football, and if these guys are really gonna stay around, uh, keep supporting the club. Uh, yeah. Also, we go into some records. Um, highest points total ever gathered in, in League Two since its inception in 2004. Uh, was by Northampton Town in 2015-16 season who got a whopping 99 points. Now that sounds like a lot. If you ask me, in the lower leagues in English football it's just so balanced that no team really dominates it because with 46 games played in a season, 100 points isn't like that out of the question. You, you just need yeah, a points average of about 2.2 I reckon and uh, that's not not insanely good. Uh, like when, Especially when I think about what's been going on in the Premier League where they have like eight games less and um, Manchester City recently hit the 100 points total. But yeah, that's not neither here nor there. Um, <coughs> and yeah, as we talked about Ewan Doyle and his striking record last season, the record uh, lies in, on, in 31 goals. Uh, it's hold, held by, I didn't note that down, no idea who, I know he played for Port Wale. Uh, but also, uh, we talked about <coughs> Ewan Doyle being on track to beat it last season. We've also got a player who's on a very, very good track right now as well, which is Paul Mullen, a 26-year-old striker from Cambridge United, who came out of nowhere and he started the season like a house on fire, 11 goals in his first 11 games. And uh, yeah, of course, barring injury or, or uh, uh, move up the leagues in January, he could just uh, hit a goal mark towards the 50 reaches, not just uh, 31. Uh, so more uh, I hope the best for him and that he gets it. Uh, yeah, um, I'm always. Uh, that's all I have on the on the English League Two. Uh, hope you enjoyed that insight. I really did enjoy reading into it a bit, uh, getting a bit more information about it. <coughs> and let's just have a look at, at the squad we have built here. Now our goalkeeper James McKeon. Um, not much to say on him. He's a Grimsby Town legend. He captains the squad for since la in the last ten years on both National League and League Two level. And uh, yeah, he was very. Yeah, he was he was average for us. He made a couple of very good saves and he was slow to react to a load of rebounds and stuff. This is just something I, I noticed in general playing with the Silver Squad. In terms of uh, rebounds and reaction times and uh, reacting to my inputs, especially when uh, quickly halting or turning around, it's just frustrating with Silver players. You really, really do feel the difference. Uh, at the beginning, I was just getting frustrated and thinking I had a load of lag. It's just not the case. It's just how it's supposed to be played with Silver players. And that's very good because you should really, really feel the difference and it shouldn't just be like, Oh wow, this guy's got 90 pace, um, he's insane. And he just isn't, they don't react as fast. I think the reaction steps are very, very important one in FIFA. Uh, so yeah, uh, that was interesting experience, not a good experience because it's quite annoying, uh, especially because we used to put ourselves at a disadvantage using a very low end set of teams. I know I have got full chemistry and camp stars on them, so that makes them a lot better. But you know, you don't look for meta players either. 
Um, when you look at our two strikers, they both have two star skill moves, and in tight situations, you really, really could use at least three stars. Like I don't skill a lot, but it's it's just quite necessary. You know, to do a couple of roulettes here to here, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, it was an interesting experience. And moving up further th and on the pitch, we look at our wide central backs. Uh, so that's Charlie Raglan as well as Jordan Moore Taylor, our right center back and our left center back respectively. Nothing much to note on, on them. They're 26, 20, uh, and seven, 27 year old, uh, both pretty boring, box standard English football league careers. And uh, yeah, in terms of gameplay in game, I didn't really notice either of them in a positive or negative sense. Uh, Moore Taylor put in a good couple of good tackles, cleared the ball. Uh, as did Raglan, to be fair, not as many. And uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to put out a huge recommendation for either of them, but if you do feel like upgrading a, a League 2 squad, uh, you can go a lot worse than those two. And uh, in the center we had Tom Clark, the 32-year-old. Now he this season just came into Salford City from Preston North End in a championship, where he wasn't really a mainstay, but it was still getting some good games, so he probably looks like he could still get a gig at a, at a higher level, at a higher up the leagues. But uh, he chose to go to Salford, but he's in a project apparently, and I do believe that he will have a good impact there. Um, in terms of our squad, um, he had a couple of mistakes and I was very frustrated with moving him back into position and uh, you really felt his pace being so low. Um, you know, he wasn't awful and uh, as per the, the other two, you can do a lot worse than him if you really wanted to go for, for a League 2 squad, but um, he didn't impress me at all to be honest. Then we look forward up the pitch to our left central defensive midfielder who was the defensive central midfielder of, of, the, of the two of them. And this is a very interesting case because this is Chase Spearing. And Chase Spearing, the 31 year old, was a Liverpool youth pre product back in the day. And uh, he's the most valuable player according to Transfermarkt we have in the squad. Uh, apparently he's only the 10th most expensive player in, in League Two. So I don't know where the others are in terms of rating, why they didn't, weren't able to get into our squad. Um, and he, yeah, uh, he played for Liverpool, he played, uh, and Bolton as well was at Bolton as well for a long time. He played 30 Premier League games. He almost played 150 championship matches. So he has very, very high experience, only 31 years old. So what's he doing in League Two, you're asking? Well, I can't really tell you. Um, but big one, the big one. He's a Champions League player. He came off the bench for Liverpool twice in the Champions League campaign of 2008-2009 season, uh, even against Real Madrid in the round of last 16. And uh, yeah, he spent most of his career, as I said, at uh, Bolton and also leaving Liverpool in 2012 and also parts of it in Blackpool. And this is the first season here at, in Tranmere. He, he joined, just joined the club this summer, as well as the first season for him down in League Two. So we'll see how he gets on. Hopefully he can take the league by storm. In terms of gameplay, he hardly ever got on the ball. He, when he was, he showed decent passing, but defensively he just wasn't really in the right spaces, didn't really enjoy using him. So yeah, I really wouldn't recommend him, but. It, I mean, you can see when you see his stats, he's super slow. He's uh, like five foot six or something and just doesn't have much to offer. Even his passing with the passing boost we had on him with the powerhouse just wasn't that good. And uh, yeah, very disappointed with Chase Bearing, to be honest. Uh, didn't put up good up positions to get some good passes in the offensive part of it and didn't really help out defensively as much as you'd hope for him as of a defensive. Uh, central midfielder or the, of the defensive of the cent central defensive midfield pairing. So you're quite disappointed with Chase Bearing. But uh, moving on to Ollie Clark. Ollie Clark's a bit of a curious one because he shouldn't really be rated 65 at all. Um, from what I could judge, he, he was 25 year old, years old. He left Spoil Club Bristol Rovers. Uh, despite showing himself to be of decent League One quality, uh, he dropped down to Mansfield in League Two this summer. So he really should be high rated. In terms of rating per position, as uh, I explained to you guys before, He's fairly high rated. Um, he is, uh, I don't know what, what exactly, I think it's 66 rated CDM. Um, not as high rated as a central midfielder, but we play him in the, the CDM role. Uh, he was fairly decent. We put on the Maestro camp style on him because I really, really wanted to get some long shots in with him. He had like 83 shot power and 83 long shots with it. Whenever I did get a long shot off with a free shooting lane, it was a good hit, but I only did so two or three times and that was over. I don't know, 20, 25 games. I obviously, I didn't, I, I cut out a couple of games because while well, I'm poor at this game and I take a lot longer to finish those objectives than I really should. Um, so I don't want, like, I, I, I'm torturing you with like 20, 25 minutes of gameplays anyway today. Uh, I don't really want to push it too much. 
So yeah, moving on up the pitch to the to the wingers, we have kind of, and for the wingers, I just like to imagine, I, it's it's a bit annoying because they really needed to help out defensively a lot. So we didn't see much of them because they actually were the most exciting players of the squad, uh, both over 80 pace, very good dribbling stats with that engine camp style. Just didn't see much of them. Uh, when we did, I really enjoyed getting getting in behind with them and dribbling with them, especially with Bruno and Rada down right hand side. But as for Callum Harriet, he is the only international we've got in the squad. He has uh, is 26 years old and he's played six times for Guyana in the fully fledged uh, fully fledged international, even scoring a goal against I don't know it was a country I didn't recognize Andrea or Andra not sure. Um, and he even had England on the 19 caps, so he must have been a huge talent in his youth days. Uh, then declared for Guyana, obviously, uh, making his debut for the international uh, for, for the national team in 2019, uh, hoping that he's going to stick around in that national team and have a lot of joy there. Uh, he's playing. He has played at championship level at Ch Charlton and Reading for most of his career, but uh, recent performances in recent seasons he really dropped off. And a joint league to Colchester last summer in 2019. And starting this season, not, not too impressive last season, but starting this season absolutely on fire. He's got six goal contribution in the first nine games already with three goals and three assists. So uh, more power to him. And in terms of gameplay, as I said, zero stamina, zero defensive stats, still had to help out defensively just to get the bodies back there. And uh, didn't really have much of an impact in, in uh, going forward. The only thing he did um, is that he scored that long range goal, which we desperately needed against that professional AI opponent, which a bit, with a very poor team on squad battles just to get the, those those objectives done. So uh, that was at least something. Um, but other than that, he, I didn't really notice him at all. Uh, and as for Bruno Andrade, uh, his partner in crime down the right hand side, he's a 27 year old Portuguese winger. Uh, he sounds a lot more exotic than he is because he spent all his career in England. Uh, he came through the QPR, the, the Queen's Park Rangers Youth Academy and joined Southwood City this summer. And he's thus far shown himself to be way too good for the National League. Uh, scoring 40 goals in I think a season and uh, not really good enough for any of the English football leagues. He has had a decent League 2 season in 2018-19, was poor in League 1 last season with Lincoln and uh, back in, in League 2 let's see if he can finally uh, get it in the football league, down in the football league, leagues as well. Uh, we move on to Ian Henderson, absolute legend of English football. Uh, the 35 year old striker is, is a Norwich City Academy player, a pretty box down an English lower league career, except for a three month stint and what's it called? Ankara Gucci, Ankara Gucci in uh, Turkey, which apparently ended prematurely. I don't know why that was, probably some misunderstanding or he was unhappy there. Uh, yeah, the, the contract didn't get fulfilled and um, He's still going strong in the English leagues at 35 years old. As this season dropped down from League One, Watch Daily you know, he's having quite a big impact for them still. And um, joined Salford, so another sa statement signing from Salford City. And he started very nicely too with uh, six goals and two assists from his first 10 games. So it looks like he can take the league by storm and hopefully get Salford to push up towards the uh, upper reaches of the table, despite them sitting in the table right now towards the promotion zone. Moving on, we've got a uh, striker Ewan Doyle, already mentioned him in terms of his scoring record last season. And uh, he's only here because we can't use Gary Evans, the bronze player. He wouldn't even be in the squad if he if, if we could. And he was decent for us. Um, and he just joined Bolton this summer after uh, having an insane scoring record for Swinton as well last year. Not too impressive for Bolton yet. That might still come. They're still a, a struggling club, you'd have to say. Um, but yeah, uh, he hasn't got off to a bad start. He scored two goals, I do believe, uh, starting out the season. And in terms of for, for us, he was all right, not too impressive, whatever. Before we move on to the inform player, Jamil Matt, uh, just a quick mention for the bench. No one really impressed me too much. No one has really a big, interesting story or anything. Uh, I'd just like to mention that that, that super pacey winger, it's 90 pace and, and 70 dribbling Elliot Senior. Looks like a very fun card. Didn't have as much choice just because I couldn't get my wingers involved as much as I was hoping for. But he's got a 90 plus pace, 70 plus dribbling, uh, which is insane for any silver card at 65 rated. Um, he's only 21 years old. He doesn't have much of an end product about him, so that's something he really needs to work out. But he is one of the most exciting players currently within the in the um, in the within the league uh, in League Two, and he hopefully has a bright future. And you know, when we do our road to glory career mode this year, we just might sign him. A couple of those players, I'm really interested in getting in. Uh, even Gareth Evans just playing him at striker because that'll just push his, push his rating up. But we'll have a look at that when we get there. And finally, 
Big shout out to Chama Matt. When I was playing the games, I didn't even really notice that he was that good for us. But I think he scored like 80% of our goals. Like he scored loads of headers, got into good positions, had powerful strikes, and uh, very happy. And he, he could really like he could push players off the ball and really show his strength. What a player for us! Like insane. Uh, in terms of real life, this 31 year is 31 years old and he just joined Forest Green this summer. Um, and he got an inform for like the inform we're using, obviously. For scoring a hat trick against Scunthorpe, other than that, played fairly average as he has done throughout most of his career in League Two and the National League, most recently for Northampton or New no, Newport County it was. And uh, yeah, but in terms of gameplay, utterly insane. So so happy to have him in. And uh, as we can see here, he just scores a, a goal for us in the Silver Lounge back again, trying to unlock that No Aquafor card. And yeah, as I said, I, I did enjoy my time with this uh, League 2 squad, I'd have to say. Um, at, at the beginning I was not really getting the tactics right. Um, it, it does take a lot of time because these teams are very, very tough to get to work. I obviously, I base it on getting the highest rating, average rating per position. Um, and that most of the time turns out to be a three at the back system because there's not that, that many high rated right and left backs. And so... Uh, you kind of need to get either your wingers defending or your CDMs defending properly so that you have basically five defenders or five defensive players. Whenever you get your CDMs or central mids to defend, either they're just not there as much as it was the case with Chase Bearing, or as well it means that you're just um, giving your opponent the space in the midfield because there's no one just pushing them throughout the center of the park. So you, I had to push the, full, the, the, the right midfielders back, which meant I didn't really have them to counter down the wings. I had to go for a lot of passing triangles uh, with that set with, with, with Henderson at Cam and Matt and Doyle at striker. As you can see, us in our second game, looking for or was this our last game already? Like I only for the for the Noah Walker for a spoiler alert, I only showed you the wins, uh, just because like we had enough gameplay in this episode already. I uh, didn't want to bore you too much, but do stick around. Uh, as I said before, we still have a couple of packs to open towards the end of the episode. And uh, yeah, where was I? Don't remember. Exactly, we need, needed to mm. put up a couple of passing triangles. Uh, towards the end I played a bit of more calm game and not as much counter-attacky. Um, and that helped me get the wingers involved actually just because they have the time to push up the field. And as you can see that's a very nice passing combination and crossing it in with Harriet into to Chimmery Matt uh, who scored for us to make it 2-1. So yeah, like if, if you guys are looking for a silver inform just to get some objectives done and you can't get anyone else, Chimmy Matt isn't a bad option, I'm telling you. He's insane in terms of physical presence and he's got a good powerful shot on him as well. Obviously I had the Hunter Campbell and, and, ten, chem, ten, and Max Chemistry on him, so that was a bit of an advantage on my part. But um, if you can't get anyone else because they're just extinct, do go for him. Uh, he's a fun card, I really recommend him. I uh, quite enjoyed my time with him. And yeah, then this has to be the last game. That was a crack of a game as well. Let's have a closer look at this one. I don't know why he, he had that center back and right back and the right back and center back. I don't know if it was a mistake by him, whatever happened there. And uh, here we go. He goes down the, the center of the park here in the eighth minute, plays it into Lex, who hits it into the far corner and who won it down early. And um, usually when I go one down that early and don't really feel like I have this guy under control and as you can see I didn't really have him under control going 2-0 down in the 30th minute. I would quit out just because it's just not worth your time, it's just friendly, you're not going to get much from it uh, unless you have other objectives to do in the friendly as well. Uh, but I did stick around in this one because he was just very very poor defensively, he was accompanying so many men forward and I had a lot of good opportunities. Failed to make good use of them until the 44th minute where Ian Henderson put us back into the game at 1-2. And uh, as you can see, 50th minute and into the second half we go. He plays another 1-2, gets his pacey man in behind and Honey Mukta puts it into the far corner. And it's 3-1 to our opponents and it looks like an upper battle, battle from here. Uh, you know, I've only scored one goal until this stage even though I should really be doing better. Um, but we do go up fairly fast down the other end, uh, Channel Matt going down the right hand side. That's a problem with him, I often had him in situations as these, you can't really hit dribbling moves. I, I did fairly good there, played him in behind then later on with Andrade and he puts it into the far post as he does so often. I would love to be able to have a look at his stats towards the uh, after this, but obviously it doesn't register the silver, uh, the, the, the friendly thing. I'd love for you to set up like show friendly stats as well. 
I don't think you can, uh, which is a bit disappointing, but it's fine. As you can see, we play in Andrade Day. I was certain he was offside. Like, I don't know what happened there, but I was absolutely certain he was offside. Apparently, he wasn't. And we are down to 3 3. And we're thinking, like, now we've got this guy under control. We're going to score the fourth goal. No, we're not. He is going to 85th minute. Uh, players dropping to the floor, and I was getting uh, highly frustrated. And it looks like we're going to lose this one yet again. As you can see, Senior on off the bench, dribbling down the right hand side. I said he didn't do much for us. He did there, just in the right moment, coming up big, plays it into Doyle, who scored some important goals. So not many goals, but important goals, and then towards the latter stages of games. And he also assisted Williams here, or oh, played in Williams in behind, who gave the cross into Channel Matt. And from here on out, I defended horridly. He had a lot of good opportunities, but luckily, uh, my goalkeeper was just about able to keep him out and that sees us finally finishing today's gameplay part. As I said, I did enjoy it. I got frustrated a couple of times because I put myself at a disadvantage using such a low end server team. Uh, but yeah, uh, that was quite enjoyable and as you can see us claim all of our objectives, <coughs> our rewards. We've got Silver Starts Noah Okafor in here now. I'm very excited to have him because like, look at his stats. He's at 88 pace, 80 dribbling. I didn't know this about him but apparently he's a very, very um, he hits the gym a lot. He's got what? What has he got for physicals? Is it 88 or is it 80? Taking better, it's 80. But he does have like 90 strength. Insane card. One of the best silvers around. Maybe even better than any of the other ones we had before him. So very exciting to be using him in the in the near future. And yeah, that'll see you at the end of this part. See you for the packs at the end of the episode. Sorry, still going on. So then boys, as you can have a last look at the squad we used this episode, I'm just gonna quickly show you, can I show you in player stats, yes, in a nice way, uh, stats of our players, as you can see, obviously only cuts the squad battles games in which I performed horrendously, but uh, as you can see, most of our players played 10 games, Jamie and Matt getting 11 goals in those 10 games, the absolute star of the show today, and did anyone else get, okay, Harriet got 2 goals, and Doyle very nicely, 4 goals, 4 assists, and uh, yeah, very good contribution off the bench from Williams as well. It was a good impact sub for us. Other than that, nothing to write home about, to be honest. Senior getting two assists. <clears throat> Sadly, not be not able to see the stats of the friendlies, which I really would like. Um, but yeah, this is obviously the squad we used. Let me just uh, get in the player we actually would have needed to use to make this the best possible League 2 squad around. It's Gareth Evans, I finally got him off the market, it was quite a, a, a t tough thing to get him off the market, not costing 3 to 8 coins, 8,000 coins. And uh, let's just compare him to the striker, we would have replaced him, or we would have replaced, as you can see, 81 pace for Evans, even better shooting at 68, better passing, one less dribbling, uh, and 11 more physical as well. Uh, he would have had those 3 star skill moves, high high work rate. I really, really would have loved to use him. Um, what's it in terms of size? Six foot in terms of, yeah, he just would have been so much better all around. We would have had so, such, so much of a better time. I'm gonna drop him in here now because if you ever use this team again, this is obviously the best possible team you can use. So um, yeah, that was the squad we used to end up today's episode. As I promised you, we have got some, some packs. Um, we even got more packs because I did finish an SPC which is the find the nap one which gives us up oh, then look um as you can see here mostly players from our club or just rare bronzes i bought just to finish this one mostly for 200 coins find the nap is gonna give us a rare mixed players pack very nice very nice four rare golds four rare silvers and four rare bronzes coming in from there and let's see i did open the 75 rare player packs because i didn't expect to get any big I would have showed you, I did record it, I would have showed you if I got anything big, I didn't, just a couple of rare players into the job. Nice to have, not really, yeah, anything to write home about. We're gonna start with the premium electric players pack, which gives us three rare players. Let's see, those are hopefully gonna be gold ones. Yeah, there's like a rare gold, like, come on, give me a board straight away, why not? It's not going to be, it's gonna be Gunther, 78 rated, awful, highly disappointing, you'd have to say. Oh, it's untradeable as well. Mano Valencia from Valencia, interesting. Good silver card there. Okay, very nice. Good place there for SPCs. Then we're gonna go in next to the, to the. Oh no, we should have gone to premium gold players, but that's the worst one of the two. But we're gonna go for the 
Uh, rare Max Players Pack, is it? Ooh, blue, what does it mean? Oh, it's a combo ball card. 75? Is that the highest rated rare card? Don't tell me. Oh, it isn't. It's just because it's the it's a special card. Ooh, we've got a Premier League striker and they got over Reed. Mm, interesting, interesting. Once again, nothing to write home about, but good place to have for SPCs. Wake cost getting into the club as well. All of these packs are tradable, actually. I'm not sure. Then next we're going to go for the Premium Gold Players Pack, and then we have the huge one, the Rare Mega Pack, which we got from which objective we got? At the Silver Beast objective, I think we got that for, for completing the set. Blue again, is that Conway Ball again, or is it going to be bored? Conway Ball again. Fuenzaleda. Not all we're looking for, you have to say. Okay, nothing too impressive there. Hopefully these guys are not tradable, the duplicates. His isn't, and MacArthur's isn't either. Yeah, hopefully, like if we're not gonna get anything from this Mirror Mega Pack, that would've been a pretty big waste um, to get those uh, packs in this episode. But anyways, whatever it is in here, we're gonna end the episode on that. Thanks so much for watching. If you did enjoy, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, follow my Twitter down below as well. And uh, thanks so much for watching. Is there anything behind him in this pack? Come on, please. A couple of 82s, anyone in the duplicates? Lopez, okay, nah, nothing to see here. Thanks for watching, bye bye.